Greetings everyone, I am Brittany Duran of Punish Props and today I'll be working on my Assaultron costume. I've got to make the hand bits. And also I've been working on some of the uh, forearm pieces that I started in the last video that you saw. And I added some more details and stuff so I'll show you those and talk about the stuff I've been up to and then get on to making the fingery pieces. Let's do this! So these guys you'll recognize if you caught the last video. These are the upper forearm pieces. And I since added some foam down here. This was just uh, chunks of floor mats. I had some strips of floor mats that I had left over. I sanded off a lot of the texture. I cut almost all the way through and then rounded it over with a rotary tool. And that way it could get a square because for some reason that part of the arm is supposed to be a square. And I also added this extra lip, that's just more 6mm foam. So yeah, and this back piece I made is just a bunch of circles that I cut out, and I did this one on the laser cutter, so that way I could push in chunks of the circles to get this nice depth thing going on. And I just glued that right to the back. This is all hot glued in there. And this part I had cut out after I tried it on because I want to be able to actually bend my arm. And then I made a upper arm piece. This is the next piece I made. And you'll notice it has already been sprayed with latex. I had really nice weather in Seattle the past two days, so I've started doing the latex for my armor, even though I don't have it all done. Uh, I, I got um, all the chest pieces, all the leg pieces I made already are all coated in one layer of brush on latex and then in five sprayed layers, so six layers total. It was just normal acrylic paints that are used for screen printing. So they're really high in pigment. I mixed it in the latex, so it's already like a tan greenish color. So now this is super flexible. I did the forearm, and then I got this guy. This goes on like this. I conveniently have tiny spear hands, so I can just wiggle this on here. I'm trying to break up the look of having a wrist here. So it goes like this. And this is all just layers of uh, craft foam glued on top of each other. These were made with a rotary tool, so this is a small rotary tool bit. The next thing I did was a bunch of finger templates. My original plan for the fingers was to do what I did with my Vex Goblin. And that's what these guys are. These are from my uh, Destiny Vex Goblin costume. So with the way these fingers work, and then this one goes like that. The Vex Goblin has these really long fingers, still like a human hand shape. So there's one that's lower, like a thumb, and there's three upper ones. So this worked out really well. I just would jam these on my fingers and then have them for the convention. Uh, some of the downsides are to take them on and off, it takes a little bit of time and I might drop them. So I would have to just stare down at the ground at them after I drop them and hope somebody picked them up for me because I had trouble bending over in my costume. And my plan was to do the same method for the Assaultron. I did a test where I kind of drew out the basic shape. I designed kind of a top piece that will curve alongside the finger and be glued into it, and the same with the bottom piece. Here's my test piece I did. This is all six millimeter foam. And it ended up being a little thick. The Assaultron fingers are thicker than the, the Vex ones. They only have three fingers. I could easily fit two of my fingers in there. So I was like, all right. I think this is gonna work. So I then took a picture of my finger pieces on this grid mat and opened it up in Inkscape to scale the finger to the correct size. So this little square is one inch. I transferred that over to our laser cutter software and cut these out on a laser because I needed a whole bunch of these. There's two for each finger piece. I had to cut out like 12 of these guys and some of these guys. So I was like, this is gonna work out great. So I cut out all the ones I needed out of, out of the foam. And I even laser cut some details into them, which in hindsight, isn't gonna work for my latex because these details are just gonna get filled in with latex and go away. So I was like, all right, probably should have cut out the details on two millimeter foam and uh, glue them on later to add that extra thickness. So here's my next iteration of the finger pieces. And what I didn't even consider is the way that these fingers are shaped is not human hand shaped. Uh, I figured I could move them around a little bit and kind of fake this shape, like have some of my fingers not be all the way in the uh, in the little joints. You can see here, like I cut this one to try and, I think it was this guy, try and get this one at the right angle. I couldn't get the shape I wanted. Like if I twist this one, it's everything wants to twist and if I it's really, it's really a losing battle. Like I can cut these and change their angles and 
maybe not have some of my fingers, have some of my fingers curled up and not actually in the, the thing. It was really uncomfortable. And one of the things with my costume is I want as much comfort as possible while still matching the silhouette. It was a failed idea, <laughs> which is okay. It sometimes takes a lot of iterations to get the look you want and have it be functional and wearable. I don't need these to move, I just need them to look cool. That's one of the main things I like doing with a costume. In the costume, I'm prob probably not going to be able to see very well, so it's not like I'm going to be running around opening doors, so I scrapped this idea. Since I kind of tore up these fingers a little bit trying to get them to fit, I'm going to have to remake these guys, and that means I can redo these details on a separate piece of foam, make them look even better better so they'll have nice thickness going on. The new plan is to have hand stumps and I'm actually kind of excited about this because it's gonna be really comfortable and it will look exactly like this is a uh, like looking straight on the hand see how they're like evenly spaced right there. So this is my test hand stump piece I made. So this goes on like this and hides my wrist and then this just goes on like this. And this is comfortable. I don't have to make a tight fist or anything. It just sets on there. I can probably add something in here that I can loosely grip. You don't want to like keep keep tension when you're in a costume, like really tightly hold something. So if I can just loosely set this on, add some upholstery foam in there so it's nice and snug. My hope is that I can recut these on the laser, which I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys the program we, we use to do that. And then glue these guys right on here and they'll be all nice and evenly spaced, and this will all be one piece. It'll be super easy to take off. I could just like tuck it under my other arm when I need to use my hand. I won't have to worry about losing finger pieces because these will be permanently attached. I won't have to worry about dropping a bunch of random finger pieces like with my Vex Goblin. This will just be one big giant thing. I think this is going to be the correct solution that will be the easiest and most comfortable for me. Urgh, I will have hand stumps. I'll show you guys how I took my vector files in Inkscape over to the laser cutter and fit them on this little craft foam sheet. This is Inkscape and in the document properties, I made my document 12 inches by nine inches, which is the size of my craft foam. So I know my working area and I changed the, I changed the measurements to inches. So Inkscape is a free program where you can do uh, vector creations and it's not super scary to use. Um, all you have to do is import your image, just open an image, and then you just start drawing on it. You just use this draw tool to create little points. So it's not like you have to be an artist, you can just do whatever. And then with this edit paths tool, you can, uh, you can control them all. Yeah, look at that. So then you can start making things curved. And you have these little, little fangly little handles where you can curve stuff and do all sorts of things. And you can, uh, you get all these extra controls up here to add and delete points. Like let's say this part was curved and I want it to be straight again, I can just select these two points and separate them and then re-add the line. There's all sorts of cool crazy things you can do. So it's not scary, I highly recommend getting it. It's a free program called Inkscape, so definitely check it out. This is what Bill uses to draw his blueprints for his different weapons and things. Cause you can just have an image in the background and trace over it. So what I've done so far is created the size of the craft foam and I took my one drawing of the finger piece and I made a little, kind of like a little indent Kind of where it's going to go into the hand stump. I'm sure I'm going to have to cut this a little differently, but it's fine. I'm just trying to duplicate as many of these as possible. In this program, you can do things like uh, like mirror it easily, flip it, and then play a little game of Tetris to try and fit as many on this paper as possible. I don't think it really matters what color you make your stuff as long as it's consistent. So the lines I want to cut all the way through the foam, I made red, and you can just do that under your stroke paint color. These are the top and bottom finger pieces and I have to cut wedges into them so that they hinge at the right point so that this will hinge at this other point in the finger. In order to remember where I cut all the pieces, I am going to partially cut into the foam with a laser. So that's what these blue lines are. I'm going to have those at a different power setting and I'm going to do those first so that the laser will go cut all those out just barely in the foam. It's like guidelines really. And then the laser is going to go through and cut out all of these other pieces. So once you get all that figured out, um, we use a program called Retina en Engrave. All you have to do is actually go to file and print. <laughs> It's kind of weird, but it, the laser program counts as a printer, full spectrum engineering driver, and you just hit print. With the program open, it will import. This is full spectrum laser retina engraved 3D. 
So here are my pieces, and you notice it trims it to the exact size of what it needs. You notice here that you don't see the colors that I applied to my vectors, and that's because we're in the raster engrave. If you go over to the tab where it says vector cut, you can see the different colors I added. It automatically sets the two different colors to two different vector layers. These are just pretty much commands that are gonna go to the laser and tell it to do certain things. So right now it thinks that it wants to cut out the red color first. I would like to cut that out second. It's good practice. It doesn't matter too much with this foam, but if you're cutting through something that's a little sturdier, once a piece is cut out, it's gonna drop a little bit. And then if it goes to cut pieces on that piece, it's gonna be a little bit lower and not get a good consistent cut. It's, it's important that you get your laser at the exact Exact right height. If it's lower or higher, the laser won't be in focus and it won't cut as well. So I always like to do the outline second and any kind of little fiddly bits that it's going to just lightly cut into it first. So let me change that to one. And right now it's set to power 100. For our laser, that is too much for foam. The blue lines that I just need to use as references, I'm going to put it at a power of two and only one pass. So the laser is just going to mark those lines um, with one little pass. And speed 100. I can go at the fastest speed. For the pieces that it's going to cut out, um, um, th and this might not cut out all the way through. This is at the about the max thickness that our laser can handle, and that's about what quarter inch. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. So this, I might have to lightly trim along where the laser removes the material to get these out. Power 20, speed maybe maybe 80, and two passes. So it's going to go with the red lines. It's going to go around each piece twice uh, with a power of 20 and a speed of 80. And that's about the general settings for our laser. We have a certain power wattage. I don't know what it is. It's 45 watts. 45 watts. So for a 45 watt laser, this is what we use. I actually just recently learned how to use a laser cutter on my own. So this is with this costume. So this is what I've learned so far. Bill is the expert. It's time to get the laser on. Now I'm going to use our depth setter. Uh, the way our laser works is you put this under the laser and then you have a little screw that you manually change the height. So this, uh, depending on the thickness of material, is how high you put everything. You want to make sure that the laser is in the upper left corner in a starting position and then it will cut through all your pieces. Uh, it will do a little kind of test fitting. There's a button I can hit on the keyboard that will have it do a test. I'm gonna have Bill hit the button for me. I don't have a wireless keyboard so I can't take it with me into the other room. That looks perfect. All right. And you can see there's a little red dot moving along the lines there. And that's where the laser is cutting. And it says it has estimated time of 3 minutes 16 seconds left. On this craft foam sheet, I was able to fit two of the fingers and it almost cut all the way through. I'm gonna have to go around these edges with my knife to finish the cut. You can see here with this wedge cut out that when I bend this piece, get a nice little, little crease there. So I'll just start here and work my way down and I'm sure it won't be perfect, but I don't care. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I think I put glue on the wrong side of this. Oh boy. <laughs> Prop tarts, you didn't catch me. I put glue on the outside of this instead of the inside, so I'm gonna do that. It's cool if this dries like this, because I'm gonna seal it on latex, but anyway. Actually, before I try and glue these onto the hand stump, I'll want to uh, laser cut the little details and glue them on there. So I have a little slice of two millimeter foam that I'm going to laser cut some details on and then glue them onto one of the finger pieces and see how I like it. 
And if it ends up working out, I'll cut a whole bunch of them later and make the rest of the fingers. So this is kind of like my prototype. I'm gonna hit this a little bit with a heat gun and see if I can get a little bit of the bend out of it. So I have the details of the finger pieces that I wanna laser cut out of two millimeter foam. So I'm just going to take this guy, hit Control D to duplicate it, and then flip it. One of these will go on one side of the finger and the other go on the other side. Since I didn't close the program, it remembers the last settings I use. So it thinks I want to do the blue line at two power with one pass. I'm going to do one power. This is thinner material, so I'm going to do uh, 100 speed at 10 power, but still do two passes? Uh, we'll see what happens. That might be too much. <laughs> this is really thin stuff. really well. Even at 1% power going at 100% speed, these little guidelines for where I want to add screw details with the rotary tool still almost cut all the way through. I don't just want to glue it here, I want to kind of inset it a bit so that if it gets knocked around it won't want to tear. I don't want this to be the weakest spot. Also, I want to like take my rotary tool and smooth out all the edges of this and make it look all nice. I might add some more details and stuff too, but this is just a test to make sure this finger works out before I make five more and then I put it all together and I'm like, oh no, I wish they were different. It really does look like I have a pirate hand right now. I think this is gonna work out. This permanent attachment for the finger seems pretty sturdy. I'll do some tests after the contact cement is fully dry and make sure this isn't gonna fall off. And if it's gonna work out, I'm gonna make five more of these guys. And then this will have some kind of attachment on the inside, probably a little, little foam bar that I can grip where it goes in like that. And then I'll have my other finger pieces separated like that. <laughs> this is pretty exciting. This is feeling like a real hand piece. I'm happy. After three different versions, I think I finally got one that will work. I just have some parts of the assault run head left to make, and then I have to paint the bodysuit. Uh, I've started sealing these guys with latex. This one is already sealed, so it's all good to go. So I'll start painting these guys. It's feeling like I'm in a good spot right now. That's great. Yay! Thank you everyone for hanging out and checking out the video and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Prop Live.